Hi hey everybody, Flash Rasman here with a new Trasman Tries. Today we are looking at Plan B from Outer Space, a Bavarian Odyssey. I picked a demo up for this in a recent Steam Festival. And I played the demo for about five minutes and was absolutely hooked. And so I, so I, so I, got the, so I, thought, so I bought the full version of the game so I could show you guys it's great, it's hilarious. So what is it? What is it about? But it's ten pound forty nine on Steam at the moment. It's got a demo. I like demos. Demos are good. Demos allow you to play it without committing to buying it, without then having to the hassles. Obviously, you can buy the game, then you can get a refund, but that's not fair to the developers. So anyway, what is it about? Let's read the Steam. Escape from the grasp of the bar the Bob variants. Plan B from Art Space is a stellar adventure in the style of an inter in interactive book and takes inspiration from the classic science fiction stories and Bavarian culture. Every decision will affect the outcome of your mission to leave this strange planet unscathed. It's like the old cheesy adventure books, is basically what it's like, and it's great. So anyway, we'll dive in. I know I don't want to do city books, but I do like this type of narrative storytelling. Because if you, again, like things like Ambition, Aminuate, and Power, Suzerain, these deep, kind of text based choose your adventure type books, stock games, I love. Anyway, net, new game, initialize, the automatic ship system, prologue. It's going to involve a lot of reading for me. The cosmos, inf infinite space, the dust of a passing co comet glistens lazily in the light of two mellow suns. Planets spin round their axes as if hypnotised by their own steady movement. You stand in the command area of your ship and stare it into infinity. You love these moments of peace and contemplation. The ma majesty of space affects you deeply. In these moments, you profoundly value the magnificence of, magnificence of space travel, especially since most of your own travels consist, consist of you staring at the inside of a cold sleep chamber. You check your mag your command console. All systems find the course set. Time to go back home. You turn your back into the turn your back on the myriad of light of little lights out there and go into your into the stasis chamber. You earn some sleep. You get cozy while your ship is preparing everything for your dreamless stasis. You reflect on the past few cycles and your and your successful mission to save endangered animals, to deliver unflavoured nutrient paste, to destroy an enemy base. I'm going to go with this one. Of course, you are scientists above all. Your foremost duty is to observe and document, not to intervene. But when an ecosystem as unique as the feather meadows of the Aguil Peril Perry is in danger, you can't stand by and do nothing. Dramatic reef fires were threatening to destroy the planet's entire flora and fauna, and no one could figure out the cause. It was only thanks to the shape-shifting ability unique to your people that you were able to infiltrate the local population and manage to identify the cause of the fires. It turned out that a large organisation was ruthlessly, ex ruthlessly exploiting the planet for their own short-term gain. But thanks to a series of events that included motivational speeches and a bit, a bit of, a bit of seduction and a fist fight with a strong stone-wielding repti reptiloid, you managed to change the minds of these and those in charge. The Aquaparians, with the exception of the six million newly unemployed coral arsonists, will celebrate you as a hero. <laughs> Oh, it's there's a, there's a sense of humour in this game that I that it's kind of I love, and that's I just love that. You take a sip of your Earl Mauve tea and dream of peace and prosperity among stars. Go to sleep. Let's go with a grand. Knowledge creates understanding. Understanding is a pre pre prerequisite of a peaceful coexistence of all intelligent beings. This guiding principle d d drives the union of interstellar, interstellar civilizations on whose behalf you are travelling as an explorer on a six-year mission. You regularly investigate cosmic phenomena, meet new meet new beings, and bring light bring the light of civilization to the darkest corners of the universe. Satisfied, you finish your cup of tea and lie down in your stasis chamber. I should have my cup of tea while we're talking. You wake up in the darkness. Darkness. It is cold. This is always a part of cosmic that bothers you the most. Waking up. But now that you think about it, there's also but this is also the part of that bothers you about ordinary sleep. <laughs> the best way to get rid of cold sleep hangovers is doing some stretches. While still in the capsule, you begin to expand your body to four times your regular shape, and then rapidly shrink it again. After a few repetitions, you contract back to your standard form. Oh, blimey. So, but, <laughs> I don't know, it's just crazy. Uh, I went with this in the demo. 
No, I'm with this one in the demo. <laughs> Massive brain. Uh, <laughs> let's go to blue mushroom eyes. Q, multiple multitude. Simple uh, snail cyclops. Q, multiple uh, multiple. Simple lips, tentacle teeth, insect tongue. Lips. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Accessories. I'm hoping that I'm hoping as the game, because well, yeah, good point. Sorry, I, the game came out on the 26th of August 2021, which so has not been out that long. But I'm hoping that the that this gets expanded as what to different things you can different type values you can build. Let's see, that looks better. I went with that. I went with that. Let's see what else we got. Let's see. Yeah, that looks more like it. Confirm. Confirm. <laughs> ah, that's better. Your limbs still feel a little numb. Finally, you turn on the light and immediately, and are immediately blinded. Instinctively, you squeeze your optical organs tightly shut. After, you f after a few minutes, you finally feel awake. You leave the cold chamber. You're surprised by you, what you see on the screen. You expected to see the star base of the Academy of Science instead. The monitor is filled with the view of a planet unknown to you. It, its light bays a command bridge in the most menacing of colours. Blue. Scary. <laughs> ah, Commander, this is a voice of the automated ship system. Or, for short, ass. <laughs> I just again, that's childish. My childish says you, but that just made me laugh. Your, your ASS regrets having to interrupt your cold sleep, but my protocols recall that I consult the opinion of a biological intelligence in an extraordinary situation such as this. You keep most of your eyes on the on the strange plant and head for the small but built-in food dispenser on the bridge. What is it, ASS? Why aren't we home yet? The only onboard intelligence makes a few bleeping and crackling noises before continuing. The AI version of clearing one's throat. I performed a slingshot manoeuvre near this planet to shorten our travel time. Since this celestial body has not yet been categorised, I made the usual measurements and came across... and came across something, uh, something astonishing. There's an there's an oxygen balance on the surface of this planet. So I'm just muting my phone, keeps buzzing. Do, 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 do. There's oxygen balance on the surface of this planet. Signs of complex carbon reactions and unusual surface patterns. And it says get to the point. You get yourself some breakfast gruel. Usually a bit grumpy without it. <laughs> she sounds a bit grumpy already. The point is there is life on this planet. More than more than that, if my initial analysis is correct, it is intelligent life. You turn abruptly to face the ominous blue planet. Your breakfast school slides out of its cup and splatters dramatically onto the floor. ASS, you, whis you whisper softly, that is disturbing, is boring, I just want to go home, is incredible news. I'm a scientist, so again, is it disturbing because it's blue and clearly don't like blue, or is it incredible? Yes, go with incredible, because I'm a scientist, aren't I? You feel the excitement rising inside you, the rush of a completely new discovery, a foreign intelligent species. You contemplate the unknown world that fills your screen. Blue, the colour of blood. <laughs> oh, excellent. What wonders might it harbour? I want to know more. Let's study them from afar. I want to know more. SS, show me more. I want to know more. On the console next to you, a light comes on. SS obediently lists all the data it's collected, collected so far. The surface of the planet is covered by an intricate grid of roads and transport routes. Its night side is lit up by huge metropolises in which these creatures spend their lives. There must be millions, perhaps billions of them. Their oceans and the air are saturated with the toxins from their industries. You see radioactive, radioactive elements that don't occur naturally and which are only born in the hellfire of nuclear warheads. All of this is so rustic. These beings have not yet been exposed to the complexities of modern interstellar civilization. They seem so careless with their current home. It is clear to you 
that their scientists have already discovered some other habitable planets nearby that they can colonise in a few generations. You'd love to come back later and visit this world as a tourist. Of course, this would, you wouldn't want to live on such a backwards planet. That's when your ship is hit. The impact sweeps you off your feet across in tabbage that are bright sparks and whole consoles fly straight out of their sockets. A course of science come to, come, comes to life and the bridge is bathed in green light, green alarm, the highest level. I <laughs> just, I love how they've got different colours mean different things. Like, obviously, green to us is good and like red, and red to us is bad. Yet yeah, to them, blue is bad because blue is the colour of blood. It's, yeah, I just, I do love these little kind of these little things like that change the context of your understanding of what bad, good and bad is in the context of the game. Mm -hmm. All right, something has gone terribly wrong. Essus, yes, what the zarg is going on? The artificial intelligence interrupts the cacophony of a different alarm signal of different alarm signals for a tiny moment to answer you. An unidentified flying object has hit our starboard side. Due to the impact, there is significant system damage. Total collapse in approximately 600 seconds. Go team. <laughs> the, arm, the arm signals are back to full volume. You rush to the control console. You frantically wipe through the various warning messages that flash at you in an aggressive turquoise. <laughs> Finally, you find the central command control. It does not look good. You look at the various flashing menus. Ensure what to do. What did the ship collide with? Although more and more warning lights keep popping up, you simply have to know what caused the collision. ASS was able to recognise the object, but could no longer could could no longer react. Nevertheless, you can tell from the little data you have that something strange is going on. This wasn't an asteroid. The object that rammed us was far too un, far too uniform for that. Some sort of flying object, perhaps a primitive communication satellite or a weapon system. What barbarians clog up the orbit of their own planet? Another alarm joins the cacophony of sirens. It seems like your life support has just failed. You need to act now. ASS. I don't want to keep saying ask, even though it's amusing. I don't want to get told off by YouTube. What are our options? The collision destroyed the central energy core and several of the backup energy, energy store units. Proportion of communications and sensors will fail in mere moments. Calculating proposals for further action. The warning signals are back again. Meanwhile, you continue to look at the different displays you tried to calm down do that you look at the you you look at your tentacles and notice that they are the color of the console at which you are standing your body has activated its camouflage reflex completely without your intention a sign of uncontrolled panic this ship has no longer ha no longer has sufficient energy reserve to escape the the gravitational pull of this planet and the emergency landing is inevitable initiate landing maneuvers please change into your necessary emergency shape the ship jolts as ss could corrects the course of your vehicle with the last available energy reserve to enable a semi-controlled landing. You stare at the main screen, the ominous blue colour of this nameless planet begins to fill the entire field of, the entire field of vision. You can see land masses, weather formations, mountain ranges and lots of unyielding hard soil. You get ready for the emergency landing. The spaceship begins to shake violently around you as it enters the upper layers of the atmosphere. You try to remember the lessons from your training for exactly these kind of situations. You know that your natural ability to shapeshift is a key to surviving the crash, but how? By flog! How many passenger flights have you, st you stared at? The safety brochures and made fun of the little picture pictograms. All you can remember right now is a stupid joke you made to your fellow traveller at the time. Should you form a robust armour to protect yourself from the impact, or a series of gas bubbles on the surface of your skin for better uh, skin so you can better absorb the shock of the impact? Or should you spread yourself thin and white so you don't get tossed around too much? Form an armour around myself. You, you decide to produce a dense armour as, impen as impenetrable as possible to protect yourself from any day. But just in time you manage to seal your outer layer and then the ship hits the ground. The entire bridge bursts into flames and debris flies everywhere as if we were hit by the fist from a higher power. Screens, consoles and seats explode in a shower of tiny splinters. Machine parts and scrap metal are blasted in every direction that the three-dimensional universe allows. You are violently catapulted to get against the ceiling and break through the wall of the ship. Everything is black. Then everything is black. For the second time in this cycle, you wake up in pain. While unconscious, you revert to your default form. A familiar sight stretches out above you. A sea of stars for a moment, it feels like you're standing on the bridge of your ship again, except you're lying on something softer than you remember. 
you jump up, you were ejected from the ship when you broke through a weak spot in the outer wall in your in your armoured form. You're unprotected in this atmosphere this in the atmosphere of this of this blue hell planet. <laughs> What if you're inhaling acid right now? Shocked, you take a deep gulp. It only takes a few minutes for you to notice that. You have not died despite breathing in the fine atmosphere's air. We look to you, look around you, surrounded by motionless column-like organisms. They are stretched up skyward with a, with a multiple of ever-thinning arms, ending in green lobes or needles that gently sway back and forth. It could be a species that filters its nutrients from the air, or they are hunters just lurking away to a smaller creature to approach. <laughs> We're surrounded by monsters. <laughs> Observe the organisms, threat the organisms, take a chance to return to the ship. <laughs> the trees. <laughs> we'll take a chance to return to the ship. You get it while observing the reactions of the column like creatures. They continue to sway in the wind. A few careful steps in the reaction. How ludicrous. You probably got a little confused by the excitement of the crash. Evidently, these large green creatures are local plants like trees or mushrooms. Station are mostly, mostly harmless. Station are mostly harmless. Just because you're on an alien planet doesn't mean everything wants to kill you. Then a leaf loosened by the wind lands on your head and you run all the way back to the ship in a blind panic. <laughs> One of your hearts goes into seizure. <laughs> I did a quick run on the demo before I bought the full game and I didn't have this because I, I made a different choice. I went with air bubbles and you get, and so you get a different... You get a different you get a different event. I didn't get this. I didn't land outside the ship because I chose the air bubbles. It's like it is like a choose your own adventure. It's great. You find your ship at the bottom of a small crater. Parts of the hull are still glowing from the crash. At first glance, the structural integrity of the ship seems to be intact. It looks better than you expected. You think to yourself, then you enter. You think to yourself, well, it looks better than you expect. You think to yourself, then you enter. You are standing ankle deep in the debris of the cockpit electronics. No screen, no control panel, no nothing in its intended place. Hello, Commander. ASS's voice is heavily distorted, but at least one of its speakers seems to still seems to be working. Good you were able to survive the crash despite your imprudently chosen form. Stay positive. You drag your you drag you drag your feet to a cushion. Flog knows where it came from originally and sit down. Saving progress. Initialize. Crash site. All right. I'm not sure we're about to save during save between games. So just what I was just checking to see if I could save, and I get the impression you can't save as you go through. Anyway, you take a short breather, and then crucial quest is okay. Sss. Ass. What next? The damaged internal structure systems is huge, but good news is the assembler is still functional. State positive. This is good news indeed. You can construct spare parts with the help of the assembler. Given enough time and power supply, you could repair this ship or even build a completely new one. As a few buzzing and sounding bleep, SS6 continues. All we need now is an energy source. The SS hums. Where have we landed? Where can I find the energy source? What about the stress signal? How can you help me? Where have we landed? Can you tell me where uh, more? Can you tell me about this area? Your SS has taken you to a close to an energy source as was possible given the conditions. The crash site is covered with dense vegetation, but between here and the energy source, there was a small settlement of the indigenous civilization. Your SS has, has no information about the possible dangers. Be prepared for anything, Commander. Stay positive. This complicates matters between you and your way out of here. And you now presume a horde of spear wielding super. Now let's start that again. This compli complicates matters between you and your way out of here. You now presume a horde, horde of spear wielding superstitious savages. <laughs> you can try your shapeshifter past to hide yourself as best you can among the local population. Uh, about an energy source. Where do I find an energy? Where, where can I find a source of energy? Your SS has taken you as close to an energy source as was possible under the conditions. He should, should find su sufficient power supply to allow this assembly to make all the necessary repairs. Yay! What kind of energy source is it? You're already managing a kind of steam turbine over a kettle of boiling water or something similar, similarly primitive. Apparently a kind of hydroelectric power station at a dam. We can do it. Oh well, could have been worse. What about the distress signal? 
Can we just can't can't we just send a decessive long wait? The space guard can pick us up safe and conveniently in a few cycles. And most importantly, I don't have to go out into an unknown world full of potential killer parasites and locals who want to cut me up to find the, <laughs> to find the seek of eternal life or whatever. <laughs> Unfortunately, the ship's long range commu long range communications were destroyed in the crash. However, an indigenous civilization has discovered radio waves. If you can gain access to a radio station, you might be able to build a beyond light speed transmitter. Think of it as an alternative mission objective. Woohoo! How can you help me? The survival of the survival equipment was destroyed in the crash. Fortunately, the assembly still has enough energy to produce a single piece of equipment. Keep your brain containing organ high. You look at the control panel of the assembler. What piece of technology could save your life on this strange planet? A blaster, a scanner, a medicate. Let's go with a scanner. Come to scan stuff. Because we don't. My thought process for that is that I'm a scientist. A blaster, a blaster doesn't seem to be appropriate. Medikit, yeah, could do a medikit, but a scanner. We want. We're scientists. We want to discover stuff. So therefore, picking a scanner mix, fits more into the type of character we think we are being a scientist. Anyway, knowledge is power. Like the power to tell a puddle of water from a pool of sulfuric acid, before sticking a tentacle in it. It is this thought above all that convinces you to get a high quality mobile sensor made for you. Exactly. Commander, I've taken liberty to produce a portable communicator with the last bit of energy available. This allows you to stay in touch with your SS while you are away from the ship. The a ASS can do tactical analysis from a safe distance and, with enough samples, decode the language of the locals. You form a small skin pocket and slip the cu in the communicator. You step out of the smoking wreckage of the spaceship onto the surface of this unknown planet. You can breathe in its air, but it's filled with strange smells. Local, an local animals, temporarily silenced, temporarily silenced by your crash, begin to resume their nocturnal sounds. Not long now, not not long now until this planet's bright star rises on the horizon. Your crash site appears to be in an area of dense vegetation. Col columnar plants, presumably mushrooms, rise from the ground all around you, branching upwards and covered with green lobes or needles. The moon of this nameless source stands bright in the sky. Camouflage a vessel, yeah. Maybe you should just leave the ship standing around like maybe you shouldn't just leave the ship standing around like this. You don't want some some natives to come along and start stealing technology or worship. It's just a deity. <laughs> Part of the ship is already rammed into the ground because of the impact, but lots is still visible above ground. Moreover, your crash has cut swathes of destruction through the column and the growths. How are we going to hide the ship? There's no point, you can't, you can't hide it completely anyway. Yeah, we'll bury it. It takes it takes quite a bit of time to bury all traces of the ship under the mushroom parts, under mushroom parts and soil. All that is a huge conspicuous, conspicuous swathe of destruction. Hmm, ah, all good. You realise that no one has ever named this planet. As the first visitor to this strange world, it is your task and indeed your privilege to name this discovery. Future generations may look at this spot in their star charts and remember you and your adventurous escape from this world. Or they'll remember that the planet was found in the records of a hapless stranded corpse. <laughs> I'll name you... Terror. That'll do. I christen you... Terror. ASS, please make an entry in the captain's log. You mean the black box? Go team. Whatever, just make it official. You clear your throat and continue in a solemn voice. In the name of the union of interstellar civilizations, I christen this planet Terra. May the record show that I extend tentacles of peace and friendship to inhabitants of Terra, that they may one day prove worthy of taking a place in the galactic society of civilized beings. As an emiss emissary of the UIC, I solemnly swear to bring light of progress, freedom, decency to these beings and to free them from their primitive, free them from their primitive and superstitious ways. You feel a little sublime. Whatever happens, you enter into history, disc is secured. <laughs> Excellent. Right, the ship's battery will not recharge itself. One last time, you take a longing look at your crash vehicle, then you walk resolutely out of out into the unknown world. You only return when your mission has been successful. After a few, a few minutes later, you return after SS notices that you forgot the battery in the ship. <laughs> but then you're on your way. It's it's a very subtle it's a very subtle humour. But it's, there's a, there's a humour in it, and I like it. The unknown floor, the dark night sky, the strange sounds of local animals, everything's a bit eerie. You suddenly realise that you're you're light, away, light years away from anything familiar or friendly. 
own nothing but your skills and the equipment you carry alone on this blue hell planet. Your ASS comes to life. Please turn right here, Commander. You should we should be able to get a better overview of the surrounding area. You do as you are told, and after a few steps you are standing at the ga a gap in the vegetation that gives you a view of a slope. A valley stretches out before you in the twilight. Very good, we can plan our next course of action from here, Commander. You, can, you, can, you see the hydroelectric power plant on your left. I can calculate a route mainly through the surrounding vegetation. We could charge a battery there, bring it back to the ship and start the repair process. The damage is fair, but we should be we should be able to leave this planet's orbit. It will take a bit long to fix a ship just by ourselves, but this route leads us around the settlement centre and therefore reduces our chances of encountering locals. On the right and to the right, you can see a primitive radio wave transmission tower. We, convert, we could convert it to a bright light speed transmitter and a few easy steps and send out a distress signal. This is potentially, potentially more likely to ensure our rescue, but the path to the transmitter runs right through the nesting area for the locals. <laughs> Therefore, a confrontation with the terrorlings is inevitable. Now, the, now for the bad news, we can only pursue one of these two strategies. The flight plans I have, I have lead me to conclusion, the, the conclusion that with only 80 nor bells before there are no more ships in the area to receive our distress call or pick us up after we leave the planet's gravity pull. And your SS ASS unfortunately has no information as to when ships will be travelling to this quadrant again soon, if at all. So we only we only have a short sh one, we only have one shot at rescue. Uh, to the dam, the sat my, my first point is just to the dam because we want we need to charge the pad to get ourselves off. We can't we can't rely on a signal getting through somebody called rescuers, and that also means meeting the terrorlings. We don't want to do that to the dam. It says we cannot rely on a mere chance of a distress call will be received by anyone at all. That's why I think charging our energy so and repairing the ship is the best course of action. More importantly, we should encounter fewer terrorlings on this side of the valley. We could take the road to the hydroelectric power station. Very well, I will collect detailed position data for our way, for our way back. You set off. The way down to the valley is steeper than you expected. You to form additional sticky feet to keep your balance. You realise that you have to find a form appropriate to the planet. Until now, however, you haven't seen any local wildlife. Perhaps there are no large animals in this world. That's when it happens. You hear the being before you see it. From in between the trunks, you hear a kind of gurgling, a combination of sound of sounds like you've never heard before in your life. Without a moment's hesitation, you throw yourself into the undergrowth and take the colour of the surroundings. Not a moment too soon, a grotesque, peak, a grotesque creature appears in your field of vision. A biped with two strangely rigid tentacles ending in unusual five-finger extremities. The creature has a head with two eyes and, a, and except for a few pieces of fur over its eyes and above the mouth, opening is covered only with pink, sickly skin. At least that part you can see. Large parts of this creature are wrapped in some kind of shell or clothing. A tool user, an intelligent being, you see your first telling. It seems to be looking for something. Uh, ASS, what does this creature want? Why is it yelling? You, your direct communicator with ASS clears its throat. Your ASS will now try to analyse the language of the locals. Be patient for a moment. Motivational shout out number six. <laughs> I think in the pre yeah, in the demo mode, I discovered that the the ASS has got has got the default settings to uh, mo maximum motivation when we crash because he wants to keep me happy and you can't turn it off. Analyzing a foreign language is a massive challenge. Deciphering a novel phonetic system meaning grammar and symbolism without reference material takes time. Not to mention ling linguistic nuances such as feelings, ambiguities, poetry, and humour. Even highly developed supercomputers need an eternity for this, sometimes even, sev even several minutes. <laughs> Your SS has extrapolated a tra temporary translation matrix from the existing language patterns. Activate interpreter mode. About time. In your ear, S ASS filters out the creature's incomprehensible roar and simultaneously replaces it with a translated version. Fifi, Fifi, where are you? Come here, boyo. Hmm, the translation does seem not does not seem to work perfectly just yet. And, and anyway, what is a Fifi? <laughs> At this thought, as this thought occurs to you, you hear something rustling in the bushes behind you. You turn around and stare into the eyes of a furry four-legged creature that sniffs at you with interest. It's wearing a collar. 
This could be Fifi, the companion of the tailing. Picky dog. Uh, Fifi has big teeth, it seems. Try to scare to analyze the creature. Uh, so analyze it, it seems happy enough. Eager not to stir the bing, you pull out your scanner and form, form quick analysis. The creature is a predator, but its genetic makeup indicates a breed, indicates breeding a pet. Many, many primitive societies, may, many primitive societies maintain similar forms of symbiotic relationships. The creature in front of you seems to be in perfect health, except for a few foreign bodies between its teeth and in its stomach. You find chunks of man-made fibers and materials, materials that are also found in the tailings footwear. It's basically, he's been eating his shoes. <laughs> Strange. Damn what now? Fifi's lip curls upwards, revealing teeth. Its tail begins to wag. Obviously, it's preparing for an attack. To defend yourself, you grab a branch lying in the bushes next to you. But that only makes the things worse. Fifi jumps up and down, makes loud yelping noises. Tailing hears, the tailing hears the sounds and appears to be approaching you. Fifi, where are you, my boy? With all your might, you throw the branch far away from the, far away from you, hoping to make a noise that will distract the tailing long enough for you to deal with Fifi. <coughs> The result is completely different from what you expect. At an amazing speed, Fifi runs after a stick and disappears into the undergrowth. You, you, you react almost instinctively as quick as you can to imitate Fifi's form. The person is exhausted, but you are convinced that you have done a good job. No one should notice a difference. Not a second too soon. There's a push, the bushes pot and Tailing's head appears above you. Fifi, where have you been hiding, laddie? The figure of the Tailing bends down towards you. Come on, the sun is about to rise. It's time to head home. The tailing takes a few steps forward before turning and looking at you. Come on, grub, grub. You decide to follow him. The hunt. Well, yesterday you were travelling among the stars on a special mission. Today you were walking next to a barbarian on an unknown planet disguised as his pet. <laughs> None of this was mentioned in your horoscope, which is why you are seriously considering cancelling this subscription. <laughs> Ultimately, your disguise is a deception to allow you to get to the Reservoir Dam and possibly pick up some basic information about tailing culture. Check out the tailing. Yeah. The bone is about the same size as, as your standard form. It wears a badly camouflaged clothing and a metal and, and a metal tube that is probably a weapon, prob probably some kind of blowgun. So the task of this tailing seems to be patrol the forest and keep dangers away from the settlement. The task of his companion is poop, presumably to support him with it, with fine senses or to serve as a snack in an emergency. <laughs> you hope it doesn't come to that. Your thoughts are interrupted by the voice of the tailing. As you know, Fifi, we are looking for old Bert, and yes, I have been. I know we've been looking for her for several years now, ever since she tore off my leg. If you look over the tailing, he has two healthy legs. Presumably, they grow back in this species. The tailing continues. I swore to hunt down this beast if it's the last thing I'd do. He pauses to clench his fist and shake it at an indeterminate, in an indeterminate direction. The tailing's reaction to the forest direct direction, the forest reaction to his declaration of war is non-existent. After tailing has satisfied his fist-shaking needs, <laughs> he continues walking and talking. Today is a village fair. I know we haven't had any luck in the last hundred hunts and couldn't track Bert down. But if we only could do it tonight, I'd be the star of the evening. A dreamily smile spreads across the barbarian's face. Maybe I'll finally get a kiss from the innkeeper. Your tailing companion continues his sol soliloquy beside you. You use a moment to discuss the information you have gathered with ASS. What do you think this Berta hunt? What do you think of this Berta hunt ASS? Evidently, this is a primitive warrior culture. If this tailing proceeds in killing its prey, his reward would fail and a state supplied reproductive partner. <laughs> if only. We should we should should we help him hunt? What do you hope to achieve? We want to spend as little time as possible on this planet. Yeah, but if the tailing is a celebrate celebrated hunting hero, would that open some doors for him or someone or someone or someone who looks like him? Ah. For example, the door to the generator. Okay, okay, I'm following. How do you want to proceed? Uh, there's not enough time. We don't even know what birth Bertha is. But let's keep an eye out for him anyway. You, you turn your attention back to Taylor, only to find that he has nailed he has nailed a bag of ghosts to a tree. Odd creature. A bag full of Fifi stacks for the dog who tracked down Bert, old Bertha first. 
he seems a bit haunted by the whole thing. Fine, if you can go and find Bertha, you'll also be closer to your girl, so let's go. It would really it it would just be really helpful to know what Bert looks like. Uh unfortunately you don't know where Fifi species signals to the you don't know how Fifi species signal signals to tailings after it's found something. You improvise by crouching and rolling head first into the undergrowth. The tailing looks at Fifi with an unreadable facial expression. For the time being you assume you have done everything right. In the bushes you secretly take out your scanner, the scanner you bought, and check the surrounding areas for life. The whole display lights up. Of course you are surrounded by life forms after all you are in a forest. What do you think would happen? Annoyed, you fiddle with the sensors looking for something that could be a birter. There, what was that? There's a new life form on your scanner. A creature does not that does not belong here. The sensor has noticed another shapeshifter. Excitement shoots through your body. Another shapeshifter. The signal is clear but weak. What does this mean? Uh, are you seeing this too? If this two weeks make out anything more precise, damn it, there must be a way to get more details. You fiddle more with the settings of your scanner there. This button should boost the performance signal. You are at, you are you're absolutely certain. Confidently press the button, clear the mark, system, reset, restart. When the scanner is ready to use again after when your scanner is ready to use again after a few minutes, you can't find the chip shift today signature again. You kick a tree in frustration. Behind you the tailing emerges from the bushes. Come on, Phoebe, it's probably not working. Not working out with Bertha today. It's been a long night. Time to go home. With, with these words, he puts a collar on you and gently pulls you after him. Telling something is tucked away somewhere deep in the forest. You are beginning to have doubts about your interpretation of the telling as a noble telling as a noble warrior. At some point, the dog's going to come back. At some point, I presume, he reminds you more and more of the people from Ant Antarian and. Antarian, yeah, Ant Antarian, Antarian. Excuse my butchering of that. High poly leper colony. The dwelling is made of wood and is overgrown with greenish moss and algae. Apart from a dusty area, there seems to be no connection to the rest of the tailing community. Almost as if no one wants to be in contact with this tailing, or as if this tailing wants to avoid others. The tailing drags you inside its dwellings. The entire living room is made of dark wood and creaks ominously under the steps of the tailing. You always have to get used to the semi-darkness of the building, which is lit only by a smouldering fireplace. When you finally, t when you finally take in your surroundings, the first thing you m make out is a skull. You wonder whether it has once belonged to a large insect on this planet. A large insect of this planet. Two large branched antennae grow out, grow out of the skull bone. Oh, I wonder if it's a deer head. You can see another skull and another. Every everywhere you look. Skulls of different shapes, morbid trophies of a slain creatures cover almost the entire wall space. You gaze, you gaze, want your gaze wanders to a chandelier on on the ceiling of the room. It is too made. It too is made from the same bony antenna that produced from the creatures from the animal these animal heads. You can make out more and more of these creatures on the walls and tables. The slain creatures were preserved by some primitive method and are now frozen in life lifelike poses. You can see flying creatures, fur creatures, some lizard like creatures, all more or less artificially arranged after their death. You are afraid of telling or telling indifferent. I'd be afraid of it. Yeah, it's, it's best all these hunting trophies. This is a creature that routinely kills other creatures, it drags the carcasses into its living space and then furnishes them into decorative elements. What if this creature finds out that you yourself are an exotic creature of high exhibition value? Your knees go weak at the thoughts. Or maybe you just watch too many horror hollow horror films. In those in those there was always a group of friends who decided to spend their vacation in this remote living dome on the back on a backwards planet, only to be attacked by an ancient killer robots or mutant or mutants or giant uh quoplings. This way, this way situation feels the same. A loud bang snaps you out of your thoughts regarding the interior design. The tailing has dropped into one of the seats and stares at, strange, into, at a strange empty space on the wall. Enough room for a particularly large trophy. You can see some bullet holes there. That must be the source of the bang. The tailing stares moodily at the fresh crater in the 
wood as he sits stroking his still smoking weapon. That's where she's going to go, old Berta. One day, that's where she'll go. One day, precisely there. He, his gaze wanders through the apartment and stops on you. What are you looking at, eh? At her? I can hear you. I can hear your silent reproach, Fifi. The towel and gets up. You'll never say Berta reeled off. Of course, you don't say it. But I, but I can see you think it. I can see it in your in your eyes. I can see your mockery. By now, the telling Rudolph has gotten completely out of his chair and moving towards you, just get, just 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 gesticulating wildly with his weapon. And, may, and maybe I'll I'll hunt down something even bigger than Berta. Then I'll finally show you. I'll show everyone. You realise the best time to escape was five minutes ago. The second best time would be now. Uh, De-escalate the situation. How I'm a dog. What, what am I going to do? Back away. Sometimes when emotionally unstable aliens come, sometimes when an emotionally unstable alien comes at you with a loaded gun, it's better to put a little distance between you, between the two of you. Slowly you back away from the tailing. What you didn't notice, however, is that your fur has taken the colour of the dangerous surroundings. An ancient shapeshifter reflex in times of danger. Oh dear. You notice it yourself when you see the flower pattern of the curtains on your chest. Ralph pauses. He stares at you with narrowed eyes. Are you really Fifi? We're in trouble here. Your shape quickly snaps back to Fifi's regular body, regular body shape. Rudolph rubs, rubs his eyes in confusion. I really need to stop spending all night hunting. I'm starting to hallucinate. You, put, you suppress the need to shake uncontrollably with relief. That was close. Then you hear barking from outside. Through the window, you can see the, the real Fifi joyfully jumping up and down. Uh, Rudolph's eyes slowly move from the real thief to you and back again. Yeah, we're still in trouble. Damn it. Evasive manoeuvres. You, your credibility has been irretrievably lost. Better, better Vamoose, quick commander, into the air vents. You look around frantically. The house has no air vents. Impossible to check again. Meanwhile, the tailing has decided which one of his identical packs is originally and which is fake and pulls out his gun. Jump into the fireplace, but it's on fire. Oh, well, you leap in with a big leap, you catapult yourself towards the fireplace. Behind you, a bullet smashes into the ground. You escape by courageously jumping into the still glowing remains of the fireplace. The pain is easily in the top five of today, and it's not even lunchtime yet. Escape through the chimney. You scramble up the chimney. The rising heat blisters at your skin, but the blisters get popped immediately because of the rough surfaces of the fireplace. The onset of carbon, carbon monoxide poisoning eases your pain, however. Dizzy and short of breath, you reach the roof of the tailings hut. Another bullet whizzes past you. It's almost as if he knew where you'd emerged from. Hunter readies his gun again, escaping into the forest. Before the tailings can fire, fire the next shot, you jump down the other side of the house and run off into the undergrowth. You don't stop running till you can't hear the hunter and Fifi anymore. You are in serious pain, travel to the dam. Okay. Initialize. The forest. It's at this... It's at this point, I think I'm going to put a cut there and come back to this in the next one. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you've played it and what you think of the game. But anyway, thanks very much, and as ever, I shall see you in the next one. Thanks very much. Bye.